This is Indy, and today we're taking a look at a rather special project known as In Other Waters. In Other Waters is what I can best describe as a narrative-driven exploration and interface experience being developed by Gareth Damian Martin. He's a writer and artist. You may have experienced some of his work over on Kill Screen. Now, what do I mean when I say interface experience? Well, that's exactly the type of game you're getting here. You guys may have played some games like this in the past. They're not usually extremely popular, and... Honestly, the one that I can think of that most people have probably played that really doesn't even fit within the traditional concept of an interface game is Papers, Please. But the idea that you experience the game from a from a sort of stationary viewpoint, if you will, uh, in this case, with Another Waters, you are seeing the game through the eyes of an AI. Uh, this is the AI's interface, what the AI can actually see. And it's basically the data center for a diving suit. This allows you to use sonar uh, to scan the ocean environment that the game takes place in. You'll be able to take samples. You can obviously monitor the human who is inside the suit, including their oxygen levels as well as the power levels of the suit. And that's really where the narrative for this game gets quite interesting and quite fantastic. This is a very, very sci-fi experience, like old school, good sci-fi. Uh, Gareth himself has even cited Expedition by Wayne Barlow, which is a staggeringly good piece of fiction and very much in lines with what we experience here inside of Another Waters about fictional xenobiology. So the entire premise of Expedition is that it's a book about a fictional xenobiologist recording fictional recordings of an alien planet. So we're getting a little bit of that here. Now, as the AI that will eventually be known as Uma, you're going to be interacting a lot with the diving suits pilot and human Ellery Voss. Ellery Voss is one of the game's main characters. She is here on this planet, this alien planet in this alien ocean, not just looking to make discoveries as that is a part of her job, but chasing after her partner, Dr. Mine Numera, who arrived on the planet before her and has now broken connection, who is in some ways lost. She has left this suit behind for Ellery, containing you, the AI, and that's kind of where your whole journey begins in Other Waters. Now, the overarching narrative of In Other Waters, the world that this game takes place in, is one where Earth has been stripped of just about all of its resources. It's left as sort of a, uh, a shell of its former self, and humanity has now reached out into the stars looking for new life and new locations that they could potentially call home. You are one of many biologists in that endeavor. Now. How does this game play? How does an interface style game like this play? Well, first and foremost, UIX, interface design, of course, is very important considering pretty much the entire game is the interface. And I think it's something that In Other Waters does strikingly well. I'm not normally like super head over heels for these sorts of games because I feel the interfaces themselves are often too barren. And while there is often much for these games to tell through narrative if they do it right, I've just rarely ran into a game where it's grabbed my attention like In Other Waters has. I mean, look at the footage of this game. Look at the gameplay. This is from the demo, which by the way is completely free to download. It's about 30 minutes and all of the information you need to gain access to the demo on either PC or Mac is right down in the description. But it is really just breathtaking. The use of color here uh, to identify the color of the ocean itself. We can see the contour lines of the ocean through our sonar, but also the use of yellows in this sea of teal to indicate what we can and can't click on. We'll see a little bit of red later on that also indicates something of importance. It's just all really staggeringly well done, and it all feels very tactile, not just because of the visual presentation, but because of the audio presentation. I mean, just listen to this game for a second. sounds incredible and it's that use of sound with the blend of all of the visuals going on in front of you that really brings this interface 2d style experience to life in a way that i've seen few other games like this do it is really properly well done i think 
if you are going to have any sort of an interest in this style of a game, I mean, you know, they're, they're doing it well here. <laughs> like, people, some people are just not going to be interested in this sort of thing at all, and I completely understand that. But if this is something that could strike your fancy, I think uh, Gareth has done the best possible job he can in, in making the presentation for this game just unbelievably top tier. Now, we could talk quite a bit more about the game's mechanics. Uh, basically, let me just make it clear that you are going to be able to do a lot of things as the player. Now, you're not really just along for the ride here, even though you are actually along for the ride. This is very much a game about building that relationship with Ellery Voss as this AI Uma. So a lot of the time, she's leaving her life in your hands. And I think that's a very powerful thing. It's something you get to experience in the demo. And that sort of knowledge, knowing that she is sitting there out in this vast open ocean, alien ocean, uh, very close to a threat that could potentially harm or even kill her and I'm in control of that to some degree she's she's actually putting her life in my hands because she has no other choice and also because she does seem to trust me somewhat is a staggering experience one that I cannot wait to explore more of like if this game doesn't get kickstarted and doesn't come to fruition I will be very sad because I just feel like there's something really special here when it comes to narrative and also how uh, we're interacting with the narrative via gameplay as the AI. It, it's really something quite special. Now, there's a lot more planned for the full game, including a lot of player choice, a lot of freedoms, the ability to push the narrative forward and develop these racial relationships or to instead focus more on exploration because after all, you are a xenobiologist. You're very interested in the alien life in this alien ocean and you can instead go out and just make new discoveries. You can come back to your main base and chart courses to make more discoveries. You can use discoveries uh, that you've already obtained to create solutions to problems that you might run into out in the open ocean. There's a lot here in terms of gameplay. It's just presented in this 2D interface. But I think it's important that we talk a little bit about why games like this are so important for the medium, or at least why I think they're so important for the medium. When we look at video games, when we look at film, these are things where very little is left up to the imagination of the player. I'm not saying that games don't invoke our imagination. They don't, they don't ask us to imagine. Sometimes they do, but more often than not, the creators of said games have developed and crafted everything to look and appear a specific way. You know, when you play Mass Effect, well, that's the Asari. You know, that's that's what that character looks like. That's what Miranda looks like. That's what this race looks like. It's all very predetermined and predefined. Very little is left up to the imagination. However, when you read a book, when you're presented with a narrative through text, your experience is almost 100% crafted in your mind via your imagination, via your ability to take that narrative and paint your own picture. Now, obviously, some books uh, have artwork on their cover, and you might use that artwork to influence your imagination, your painting of that picture, but that's as far as it goes. That is very much the same experience we have here with In Other Waters. The UI that we see, the choice of colors, the audio, those act as the book's cover. And everything else that happens within that interface is the game's narrative. It's up to you to paint the rest of that picture. So when I go into In Other Waters and I scan a point of interest on my sonar and I read about this fish, this underwater creature that is shaped like an arrow, that is crimson in color, that is actually gliding through this other substance in the ocean to protect itself from the spores, which are poisonous and deadly, I create my own vision, my own picture of what that fish, what that creature looks like. That's the beauty of a game like this. Much like D&D, so much is left up to the imagination and that creates an experience that is not just diverse from individual to individual, but almost entirely unique from individual to individual. My experience with Inner Waters will be different from your experience because I am going to create a different picture in my mind than you are. While we are still experiencing the same game in terms of its narrative, we may make different decisions, we may respond to Ellery differently, but again, most importantly, I will paint quite a different picture than you because 
it's not often that two humans imagine or create things in their head in a similar fashion. That makes this game strikingly unique and fantastic, like few other games will ever, ever be able to be. You just can't do this sort of thing with a full-blown AAA game or even with a 2D indie experience. When everything is presented before you and predetermined and predecided, this is how that looks and that's how this looks, that's the end of it, plain and simple. But when you base your experience off text, off a very minimalistic approach like the one we get in Under the Waters, it's all your own. I love that. I love that idea tenfold. And that's pretty much all I have to say. I really hope this game is successful in its Kickstarter campaign. It's not often that I care to encourage people to check out things on Kickstarter. I'm not really like a super diehard early access person, but when I see a project that is doing something special, uh, when I think they've already presented something, in the case of the demo for Another Waters that is breathtaking within itself, then yeah, I like to point it out to people. I myself have already backed this project. Uh, it's got 20 days to go. He's looking to reach what I think is a very modest goal of $30,824. This is obviously a project that he is able to do on a more singular personal level, doing all of the art on his own, you know, working on the narrative. And he's currently at $10,981. So 20 days to acquire another 20 grand or so. And uh, I really hope the game is able to do that. So spread the word, even if this isn't something that interests you. Maybe you have a friend would be interested in something like this. These are the sorts of projects that deserve to be on Kickstarter because they simply won't work in the real world, quote unquote. A publisher is not likely to support a game like this because they don't see the monetization profit. They don't see the mainstream profit. It doesn't mean something like this doesn't deserve to get made. And it doesn't mean there aren't a group of people out there who aren't genuinely excited about this sort of an experience. It is taking storytelling that we experience in a book and bringing it to a interactive level. The ability for the player to respond to the narrative. It's like reading a book and being able to choose what happens next to some degree and to have a slightly more involved experience from start to finish. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. In Other Waters, all the information you need to download the demo to check out the project on Kickstarter is right down in the description below. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of This Is Indie, and I will see you for the next one.